Hello and welcome to another video here on the Mad Pony Interactive YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the paint system in Qt. The paint system consists of three main classes. That's Q Painter, who does the painting, Q Paint Engine, which Q Painter uses to do the painting, and Q Paint Device, which is where the paint goes. So Q Paint Device you can see can be seen as a, a canvas. So Q Paint Device is the class, is the base class of objects that can be painted on with QPainter. So anything that inherits from QPaint device can be painted on or already has a paint event that paints on it. So you can see that all these guys inherit from QPaint device. QWidget itself inherits from QPaint device. For example, if I open up a push button, for example, you can see we got paint device and Q object for the signals and, and then QWidget. QPaint Engine, we don't have to worry about that. We're probably not going, ever going to touch QPaint Engine. What we are going, going to touch is the QPainter. QPainter is, is a very extensive class. It's got a lot of stuff that we can use, as you can see. Most of these uh, functions are all to draw different things on it. We can draw text. We can draw uh, rectangles. We can draw rounded rectangles, paths, all bunch of stuff. So basically any UI widget that you see on screen, anything that you see on Qt, uh, on the Qt framework, uh, it's painted. So we're using QPainter. Now here on the documentation, we got some, some examples here with a basic drawing example and painter path example. Unfortunately, not all of these examples are, are available to us uh, using Python, PyQt or PySight. But the basic drawing example, this one is accessible and we're going to look at that and how you can find it. So if you navigate to wherever your Python version is installed and you go into lib and look for site packages and then look for PySite. Here we go, PySite. Let's open that up. And then you got the examples folder here. And in, in these examples, you got a bunch of stuff you can learn a lot. I've learned a lot from these examples. In these examples, we have... Under the widgets uh, folder, we have painting somewhere in here. Here we go, painting. So inside of painting, if we go, we can see that I'm looking for the basic drawing example and it's accessible here. So if I open this guy up and I open this in, um, and I run this, I'll just open it here in uh, Sublime Text and I'll run it. Okay, so this is helpful because this is gonna uh, show us a different different methods that we just saw on the QPainter uh, documentation like drawing a polygon, rectangle, rounded rectangle as you can see there and if I use my keys here you can see pi, chord, path, line, okay, polyline, arc, points you can barely see the points but if I change my pen width now I can see the points, and then we got the 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 styles, the the pen styles that we have here. And if I just choose a rounded a rectangle, here we got pen styles. So this is a good good way to check out what is what and uh, really fast without having to write the code and then go check it. So I I would suggest that you have this handy when you're doing stuff uh, with QPainter. Okay. Let's start with a blank file and just to make my life easier I'm just going to import everything like this and every time I use uh, a class starting with Q you can uh, just look in the documentation for that class and see what it inherits from. So let's start with a push button here and I'm just going to um, place that in there like that because I'm going to transform this push button into other things and so this way I'll just catch all the args like that. Okay, uh, and of course I'm going to turn this push button uh, like it's an app. Uh, so I'll, I'll just do that, okay? I'll make the, the window to be the push button itself. Right, you should, you should know that by now, how to do that. Let's get started. So now if I run this, all I have is like, it's a push button uh, with nothing in there. So I'm just going to place some text in here on a, while initializing the super class, which is push button. I can place in some text here. So I'll say hello, and now we got the hello in our push button. 
And that's our behavior. Okay. A cube painter is typically used inside of paint event. Cube push button has a paint event, and we can access that paint event and paint other stuffs on our cube push button. But before we get to that, I want to show you that you can actually use cube painter in different ways. Let's look at this example. I'm saying I'm gonna create a painter and I'm gonna say that this painter is gonna paint on self, which is the button, and I'm gonna draw an ellipse on my button. And I'm saying that it's gonna its x gonna be zero, is y zero, is width 128, and is height 128, and then I'm gonna close my painter. Is that gonna work? No, that's not gonna work. The reason it doesn't work is because Q push button already has a paint event, like we just said. But what does work is if I paint on, for example, a pix map. So here I'm just uh, creating a, a, pr a protected variable uh, with Q with a Q size of width and height, and then I'm saying I will want a pix map, a Q pix map, uh, with that size. And I want that pix map to be filled with the color QT black. And now down here on the painter, instead of trying to paint on a widget that already has a Q painter, I'm going to paint on that pix map that doesn't have a, a Q painter. Of course, this is not going to produce anything because we're not displaying that pix map yet. But one way we know that we can display pix maps in a Q push button is, for example, in the in its icon. So if I make the, the push button icon be our pex map and I paint on the pex map, I run this and look, we have an icon on our button. It's really small right now, so I'll make that bigger by turning our icon size to, let's say, the same size uh, that we've been using here, Q size, 128 pixels. So if I now run it, I got a huge icon right there next to my button. And you know what, I might as well add a font here, a font size with a font size bigger than what we have, so it kind of matches uh, our icon. So I have this method down here saying that I should draw an ellipse, and but my pix map right now it's black. Uh, let me change the color of my pix map to something like gray. Okay, and we still don't see it, and the reason why we don't see it is because uh, we didn't set a pen or a brush uh, for our painter. So a pen is going to be responsible for the outline. If I say painter set pen, and a pen can be initialized with just a color. I'll show you how to initialize it with a pen so you can give it the, the width first. If I do that, let's see what happens. Well, my ellipse is not there yet. Well, the, the reason why it's not there yet is because I set the icon with a gray pix map before I painted on it. So if I bring this down and we run it, we can see that now we have an ellipse that uses up all the space of that pix map. So we're painting on the pix map. Now you can see if we just set the pen with the color, uh, we're gonna have a one pixel solid uh, color. Now I can uh, do a, a Q pen and I'm using the same color, but this time I'm saying you're gonna have two pixels. And now we have a pen with two pixels, a bit thicker. We can also specify to the Q pen the type of line that we want. And this, you can find all this stuff in the example and also in the documentation. For example, in the documentation, we can see how we can initialize a pen uh, with a brush, with a width, with a type of line, and the type of cap that we want. So if I press here uh, the type of uh, solid line which is S in this case, S pen style. Okay, let's press pen style. We got this pen style here in Qt. So we got these t different types of pen styles. Let, let's try and select one. Let's uh, go for a dash line here. So I'll copy that. And I'll go back to my example. And I'm going to say, you're going to have a dash line. And now you have a dash line. Now we also have the next argument, which is C. And C is the pen cap style. So if I look at the cap style, we have these different cap styles. Flat cap, square cap, and round cap, which is the pretty one with the round caps on the end. And finally, we have the bevel joint, and which is the J argument there. And you can see what the bevel joint does, the pen joint style. We got the meter, the bevel joint, and the round joint, the pretty one with the round joints. Okay?
So all of this is gonna really help us out in doing and in styling the way that we paint. So we have an outline, how can we go about filling it as well? So to fill it we use brush. So if I set a brush and we can pass a color like we ju just did to pen to, to start with. And if I do a, bl a blue color, this is, uh, this is what's going to happen, it's going to fill it with blue. But I can also obviously start this with a brush. Now, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about uh, a really cool feature in Gradients, in Qt. I can use here a Q Gradient, and I'll do that. Now, I'm not going to be constructing a gradient. What, I'm going to, what I want to show you is the presets. Q Gradient has a bunch of presets, and one of them is Night Fade. So if I run this, you can see we got a nice little gradient here called Night Fade. And where am I getting this from? Let me just come here and show you. If I go into Q gradient and I go down to presets, we, we can see we have a bunch of presets here that we can use for gradients. And it tells us that this is based on webgradients.com. So if I open up webgradients.com here, it's going to take me to the web gradient site where I have a preview of all those gradients that are there. Well, some of these gradients that are on this website are not available, uh, but most are available. For example, let's see this dusty grass. Well, I like dusty grass. I'm going to use that one. So I'll come back to my code. I'll paste dusty grass in there, and I'll make sure that there's no spaces. And now we got our dusty grass gradient. So I just wanted to show you that because it's it's really handy. For now, I'm going to I'm just going to place this in a variable so that we can use it with a Q brush. Let's look at Q brush. And I can initialize Q brush with the gradient, just like that. But Q brush gives me a few more options that I want to take advantage of. So if we look at Q brush, we can initialize it in many different ways. The way we did it was with the gradient here. But we can also look, we can also initialize it with a color and a pix map. That's cool. But well, right now I don't have, uh, I would have to design another pix map for it. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you guys try that out. But if I do a gradient and pix map, that's going to throw an error because the gradient is not considered a color, it's considered a gradient. So if I run that, it's going to give me an error. But if I turn this into a color, like green, for example, now it runs. The thing is, our pix map, it's just gray, so you don't see it. Anyway, that's food for thought. What I really want to do is keep our gradient, and in this second argument, I want to use a pattern. And we can see up here BS. BS is what we're looking for, and that's brush style. Okay, so brush style, we got all these different types of brush style, and that's cool. Let's try one of them. C try cross pattern. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to copy it from here. There it is, cross pattern. So the same, the same is going to happen. We're going to have an error if we don't make these a color instead of a gradient. So I'm going to make these a color. Let's make it green. And now we have a cross pattern. That's nice. We can, one of the cool things about uh, the, these brushes is that we can use a texture. And a texture pattern is going to be an image that you select. Now, at the moment, I don't have any resources, any images set up, so we can look at that later on. For now, I'm just going to keep my gradient. I just wanted to show you that you have all those types of patterns that you can use in brush. I don't need that at the moment, so I'm just going to initialize it with the gradient, and that's what we have right now. So, one thing uh, I want to show you, uh, if we make this pan a bit thicker, let's make it 5 pixels. Can you notice, let's make it bigger then. Okay, can you notice the jagged edges on our pen there? And also on our fill. You can notice that, right? It's a bit small, but you can actually notice. So to get rid of those jagged lines, we can set a render hit. And a render hint, uh, we'll, have, we'll have a few. We got uh, anti-aliasing for text as well, anti-aliasing, smooth pix map transform we got a few and for that what we're looking for is this q painter anti-aliasing and i can initialize it 
like this set to render int cube painter anti-aliasing now i'm calling cube painter here but i might i could as well call just painter and now you can see that the jagged lines are gone and it's really sharp now the reason i i can call painter is because painter is an instance of cube painter but i can also use cube painter if you're thinking to yourself at this very moment, well, you you made the what that what the heck is that that you made? That's what well, I can do that in Photoshop in five seconds without code, right? And it's true, you can do that and use it as a pix uh, a pix map or a Q image or or a Q icon, whatever. What you can't do in Photoshop is make sure that this is gonna move. So because I'm painting this here, I can actually make these lines move. I can change the, I can apply transformations. I can do a bunch of stuff with QPainter. QPainter is a very, very, very powerful tool. Now, like, like I said before, QPainter is mainly used to intercept paint events or to create paint events for, for example, a Q abstract button, which, which doesn't have paint events. We need to create it. The reason why I showed you that you can do this with a pix map is because there's not many very tutorials that show you that you can actually do this with QPainter. Now, we've been using Q push button, and as you know, Q push button always has the text besides uh, the icon. If, for example, I use a tool button, and for using a tool button, it cannot be initialized with text like a push button can, so I'm gonna remove that text out of there. And now this is a tool button. The tool button has this behavior, okay? So the, the icon will stay at 128. So what we can do here to change the behavior is change the icon as we change the size of the button. So to do something on a resize event, we can call, we can overwrite the resize event. And if I place in here, I grab my geometry, the, the button geometry, and I set the icon size to be the size of that geometry. Is that going to work? No, it's not going to work. Why? Well, first of all, we didn't change the size of the pix map. And the paint event already happened when we initialized it. And it's not happening again. So in order to make that work, we need to move all these necessary stuff. And set font is not really necessary for this. All this stuff down to the resize event. There's other ways of doing this, so this is just a small example showing you that you can actually do it this way. Do that, turn that size into the geometry size, and I believe this should work. Yep, and the reason why my ellipse doesn't doesn't move and it becomes the same size as uh, my button is because I left it at position 0, 0 and that's where it is and with the width and height of 128 so i can fix that by grabbing the width and the height of our geometry and the result right now would be this okay and you can see the the pen moving its uh, dot, uh its line style and that's cool so what if i wanted to fix width and height but keep, keep my ellipse in the center of the of the widget could i possibly do this like let's say it's gonna stay at 128 and 128 width and height right and can i say this can i say the width of my geometry divided by two so it goes to the center of the geometry and the height of my geometry divided by two can i do that let's see what happens Hmm, that's not in the center, is it? But well, what's happening is that uh, its pivot point is right here. Its zero, 0 pivot point is right here. And as you can see, right here is the center of our widget. And he's, he's doing what I told him to do. This pivot point is also responsible for transformations. So if we look at the documentation here for a second, coordinate transformations, you can see that that's where our pivot point starts. And if you rotate, it's going to rotate around that pivot point. You scale, it's going to scale to that pivot point and translate as well. So that means that from these values that I have here, I would have to subtra subtract half his width and half his height. So if I do that, 
and I'll do minus 64 on the width and minus 64 on the height because minus 64 is 100, uh, it's half of 128. So if I now run this, we have it perfectly centered in the center of the button. I want to draw your attention to something that is about to happen. If I push this beyond a certain limit, whoop, we get an error. And it's, uh, yeah, painter not active aborted. Painter has an active mode, uh, is active mode. I could maybe do uh, if uh, painter is not active, uh, return, because it, it gets activated here, so this wouldn't really make much sense. Not in this context, at least. So that, what I would need to do is check the size of my widget and, and say something like if it's smaller than a certain size, I don't want this to happen. So we're already grabbing the geometry here, so all I have to do is say if the width of the geometry is smaller than one pixel, because if I say zero, it's never going to be smaller than zero, is it? Or if the height of the geometry is smaller than one pixel, then return and don't do anything else. And now we get rid of that error. And I could actually just do the height, because the width, it's never going to be smaller than this, unless you have a custom window and you don't have anything in there. Okay, so I'm going to wrap things up uh, for this video. And on the next video, we actually going to use a uh, paint event. We're going to grab the paint event and we're going to do stuff with the paint event. Uh, we'll look at how we can create uh, our own custom button with our own custom event and maybe add some animation to that. So I'll see you on the next video.